Well, I know I'm an old timer because I have lots of stories about the Second World War. My dad, he had just come out of the Royal Air Force. My grandfather served in both uh, the European theater during the First World War with the Army, and then he was with the Air Force and British intelligence during the Second World War. My dad was a pilot, um, spent some time in Britain training, and then he spent the bulk of the war in Pakistan, as it is now in India and in Burma. But uh, he would tell occasionally stories about the war years. And uh, here's an interesting little story. You know, during World War II, the various enemy combatants used different air tactics in their fight. And uh, the Germans primarily used dive bombers and fighter planes. They didn't do a lot of long-range strategic bombing like the Brits and the Americans. And the British primarily did their bombing runs at night and the Americans during the day. And um, the B-17, the Flying Fortress, was the, the big uh, bomber for the U.S. And it was a great bomber in many ways, but it had its weakness in that it was quite slow. It, uh, top speed, maybe 160 miles an hour. Of course, the Messerschmitts and the, and the Falk Wolfs could travel 400 miles an hour. And so it was constantly being attacked. And um, the results toll on B-17 bomber crews was quite appalling. About 30% losses when they headed on a bombing run over, over Germany. A lot of their bombing runs were to try and take out the munitions factories, the plane engine factories uh, in the Ruhr Valley, and so on. Anyway, this story occurs July 13, 1943, and one B-17 bomber crew were flying. Their plane was dubbed Tondaleo. Tondaleo was a character played by Hedy Lamarr in a movie about the war. They'd dropped their payload and they were heading back to Britain and uh, they were using all sorts of maneuvers to try and avoid being shot out of the sky. They were being constantly strafed and attacked uh, by the German uh, fighter planes. My, my dad, during part of the war, actually taught formation aerobatics with big Lancaster bombers because they also were very slow, a little faster than the B-17, but um, they they had to use these maneuvers to try and keep the fighters from shooting them out of the sky. Anyway, the Tondaleo had taken quite a few hits, and, and the crew was kind of amazed that they actually made it back to their base in England. Uh, but after they landed safely, and the plane was examined the next day for damage, they found 11 unexploded 20 millimeter shells that were in the bomber's gas tank. And uh, when they examined the munitions, they discovered that the casings were empty. There was no um, there are no explosives in the shells at all. Well, I should tell you that about 400,000 Czechs had been taken to Germany. They lived in labor camps and they were forced labor, many of them making these munitions. <laughs> and so these were empty, all except for one. And in that one, there was a little piece of paper and a handwritten note written in the Czech language. And it said simply, this is all we can do for you now. And, you know, I thought about that and thought about how very often um, there are these high-powered servants of God. They go out to the mission field. 
and they're out preaching the gospel, they're doing the work of the Lord, and they're very visible, and they're, they're like the, the bomber crew. They're out there engaging with the enemy. And there are a lot of uh, God's people who may feel like they're, they're more like the, the, the crews that are working simply um, providing for them in the background, uh, hidden away somewhere, uh, serving the Lord quietly, unassumingly, we often hear the phrase, well, all we can do is pray. I was looking at Paul's epistles, and if you include him as the author of Hebrews, which I do, including in chapter 13, nine times over, Paul asks the Christians to pray for him. And uh, probably the shortest, most succinct of all of them is 1 Thessalonians 5.25, where he says, Brethren, pray for us. And um, I suppose when we get home to glory, and many of these servants wonder how they survive some of the enemy's attacks, they'll find a little note somewhere, a little prayer request. And some dear Christian, maybe in an old folks' home, maybe a young mother working at the kitchen sink, maybe a faithful brother on his knees weeping out his prayers for the servants of God who are in the forefront of the battle. And uh, that little note may read, this is all we can do for you now. <laughs> if that's all, it's the best thing you can do. This is where the power is. This is where the secret of victory is. And so God encouraged you. This, this little story really warmed my heart as I thought of all those unnamed servants of God who are not in the forefront, who don't get their name out in the public, but who are faithfully providing munitions for the battle by earnestly praying for the people of God. Pray on, dear Christian. I think of the words of James when he simply said, pray for one another. How we need it. We're in the midst of a battle. And all you have to do is look at the evening news or the morning paper to see that the enemy is redoubling his efforts. He knows his time is short. And we need to redouble our efforts as we pray for one another. Brethren, pray for us. <laughs>